All right, hello everybody. This is Laura with Jot and Tittle Vintage Typewriters. We're gonna look at a um, Remington 333 today. This comes in a leatherette case with a zipper. It's ultra portable. So this is considered what I call a travel typewriter. So we're gonna take this out of the case and then get started. So now that we've got um, our Remington 333 out of its case, which has a handy handle on it. So like I said, it's very easy to transport um, what I call a travel typewriter. And we're going to take a look at how to use this. So let's go ahead and start off with our most ultra portable, portable type um, travel typewriters. A lot of times the handles are pressed in. And so... Um, in this case, it's pushed down so it fits within the case. And so I'm going to pop that back up. Just remember when it's time to put it back in your case to press that handle back down. Okay. Um, also, I don't know the year on this. I actually was unable to find any information on the Remington. Now, I didn't spend a ton of time, probably about 15 minutes, um, but I didn't find anything in my digging. So I do not know the year. Um, looks a whole lot like a Webster. Um, so I'm going to say it's probably a late 60s, possibly early 70s um, typewriter. And that's just my best guess. Okay, so let's flip this up. And we're just going to take a look at the back. By the way, your serial number is right here. Um, you can see this one has a little bit of scratches on it, and that's pretty normal for typewriters that are 50 and 60 years old. But overall, this one looks really good. It's the original gray color. We have the, um, there we go. We have the uh, paper holder and the button. Let me show you where that button goes. The button to release that paper holder is right here. Okay, and then you just snap it back down. Now here's the carriage on your typewriter and um, to move it back and forth, you just pull in the carriage release lever right there. You can hear the bell on this. <laughs> Remember, put your handle up. Um, the bell sounds really good on this particular one, but the bell will always tell you that you're close to your margin. That's its purpose. And so since I do videos for a lot of people who have never used a typewriter before, I try to think of all the questions that I've gotten over the years or that someone who's never encountered a typewriter might have. And so I have had that question before, what is the bell? And um, when I mean when it goes off, when it gets close to your margin, here's my margin. And so that bell went off at just a few characters before that margin just to say, hey, you're coming to the end of your line. You're going to want to hit the return handle or um, you may have to use a margin release to finish your word. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But to set your margins, you just press down on one of these white tabs and you just go back and forth so that you can set it for whatever width you want, whether using a postcard or regular um, like letter size paper. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to open this top and it just pops off. And don't be afraid. Um, it's got these little rubber um, and you can see this side, the rubber piece is missing. Um, and so the little um, piece of metal that sticks out that goes down in that rubber it it's kind of holds it in there good and so you may have to yank pretty hard there's nothing wrong with your typewriter um, just make sure your handle on your carriage is nowhere near so usually when I take the cover off I like to move the carriage all the way to the left and then again when you put your cover back on you're gonna have to line up 
those metal pieces with the rubber pad, snap it back in there. But when I take it off, I like to put my hand right here and just hold it and then pull. Okay. Here is your ribbon. And this typewriter uses a universal ribbon. And I love that the majority of typewriters out there use the same type of ribbon or can use the same type of ribbon. Um, it makes it really easy if you have multiple typewriters at the house but okay so this one you can't just pull it out like you can on some of the other ones you have a metal arm holding that in and so you're gonna have to pull that arm back and then pull out your ribbon when changing it out and then it pop just slides down in there um, and then make sure the arm goes back in your ribbon needs to be threaded through this guide wire here the guide wire here and in the middle section and so while it's hard to try to show you how to thread it on the video um, there is an up close photo of this area it's on our product listing link that is in the description below you can click on that and then save the product image for your reference now when you do load it make sure you put black on top red on bottom and that the ribbon comes around the top of the spool and under same with the other side now when you get to the end of your spool and the end of the ribbon it is not the end of the ink there's plenty of ink in there and so what you're going to want to do is reverse the direction of your ribbon and you do that there we go like that it probably either side works yep so you just flip based on which direction it's going and you just go back and forth. Oops, flip. Okay, and you just go back and forth multiple times um, until you just use up all the ink in your ribbon and it should actually last you quite a bit of time. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna put the cover back on. Bring the carriage over and I'm gonna show you how to load a piece of paper. Now I didn't have any blank paper, so I had to use a piece of scrap. And I'm just gonna stick this here and then turn the handle. And you don't need to shove it down in there. It should grab it pretty easily. But when you load your paper, make sure it comes underneath this metal bar that holds it taut against your roller, which is also called the platen. And I like to um, bring it up halfway to make sure my paper is even, which mine is really, really close. But if yours is uneven, then you have your paper release and you push that back. It releases the tension. You can move your paper around, get it exactly where you want, and then make sure you re-engage it. Over here on the left side, you're going to see this one, one and a half, and a two. And um, that is for your handle. So when you hit the return, it's gonna, it's your line selector. Sorry, not a handle, line selector. And uh, so it's gonna advance either one, one and a half or two lines. Um, this R, let me see what this R is. Does, doesn't really do anything. I didn't notice anything different on that. Okay. I'm just looking for something really quick. I don't see it. Okay, over here on this side is your tension selector. And uh, that really just determines how hard your tight bars, these guys right here, are going to strike your paper. Or how hard you um, can hit your, your yes how your keys respond to your the pressure that you are putting on your keys. So for example, my husband who has a heavier hand will want a different te tension selection than I will. I have a very soft touch. Okay, on the right side is your um, color selector. You've got black on the bottom, red on the top, and in the middle you'll see kind of like this clear or whatever. That is a stencil selector. You're not ever gonna use it, and if it's on there, your typewriter, the keys aren't gonna fully engage and type on your paper. And, um, and if that happens, always check to make sure this didn't get bumped. You wanna make sure it's fully engaged on the black or the red. Um, okay, so over here, we've got our tabs set. Um, I mean, our margin set. And now we need our tabs. 
and I am trying to figure out how to set those tabs. Hold on. Okay, so um, I was unable to find the tab sets on the Remington 333. This is the first time I've had it. Uh, normally, there would be like a key set uh, down here or a manual set in the back. I looked under the hood. Um, I looked everywhere. I could not find where the tab set is. So I'm wondering if it is a preset tabulator. So that is my guess. I could be wrong on that, but um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I do not know if or where the tabs are on this. Um, they're already set and I have a feeling that they're preset. Okay, let's keep going. So uh, when you're typing, Ah, look, perfect. I'm like, why is it not typing very well? That's because I'm in the middle. So let's get it back here. Much better. There's my bell. And I'm gonna keep going just so you can see the um, margin release. And right, now it's stopping, I can't finish my word. So this is your margin release. Just hit that. And you saw it kind of uh, shift a little bit. And So I misspelled mistake. So I'm going to backspace. Backspace does not erase, but in that case I typed over it, or you can X through the whole word and retype the word, um, whatever etiquette that you prefer to follow in that situation. Um, but that is how you use the Remington. You've got your letters here and if you and they're gonna it's automatically gonna type in lowercase if you want to type in uppercase this is your shift the little one is your shift lock so this now is all uppercase and it's gonna type the symbols uppercase types symbols um not uppercase shift lock types symbols and when there's no shift engaged it types your numbers so that is the Remington 333. Um, if you want to see like images of this or learn a little bit more, you're certainly welcome to look at that product listing. But I hope this helps you with your Remington 333 and figuring out how to use it. And if you've got one, um, boy, I hope it brings you lots of fun memories and many years of use. All right. Blessings and happy typing.